So now I'd like to introduce uh, David Wynn and Jason Party, also from the Geoprocessing and Analysis team, uh, to cover the advancement of Python and ArcGIS. David, Jason. Hey, thanks, Jim, and good morning. Uh, Jason and I would like to take the next few minutes to talk about why you should be interested in Python. Python, of course, is a, an open source language that we've been working hard to integrate into our product. It's an easy to use, high level language that we've extended with ArcPy, your access point to all of our Python functionality. Now, Python is widely adopted, and it's not hard to see why. It is a broad set of core libraries, it's easily extended with a large set of third party modules and it works well as a glue language to bring in your own components. Now, at 10.1, there are three new functionalities that I'd like to highlight today. Uh, we're adding Python toolboxes. This will give you the option to create your geoprocessing tools and toolboxes easily and entirely in a Python script. So all your parameter definitions, validation, and source code can all sit in the same Python file. At 10.1, I'm happy to announce that we're adding support for add-ins in Python, meaning that as Python developer, you can now take that extra step and customize and extend desktop. And lastly, we're adding a new data access module. This will feature an improved cursor model, edit session management, and functions to convert to and from NumPy, which of course is the de facto Python package for scientific analysis and large array processing. Now, with the cursors, and we've heard this from some of you, is that our existing cursor model in Python just wasn't fast enough to meet all your needs. So we had a hard look at this for 10.1, and we came up with a new faster cursor model that I think you'll be able to use widely. Um, and now I'm going to turn it over to Jason to show both the data access module and Python add-ins. Thank you, Dave, and good morning, everyone. As developers and GIS professionals, we always want to be more productive in accomplishing our GIS and, and development tasks. For me and my team, Python has proven to be the productive language where we can quickly turn ideas into new functionality and tools. For example, a popular user idea was for us to build and deliver a GPS to points tool where you could import a GPX file into a feature class. We decided the best solution for this was to build this tool in Python. So why Python? Well, let's take a closer look at this code, this Python code, to find out why. As David just mentioned, one of the powers of Python is that it includes a vast library of built-in modules where it can help you solve everyday programming problems. One of those modules is XML Elementary, which is being used here to parse the GPX file. By taking advantage of this module we, and its easy API, we significantly reduced our development time. Using an insert cursor, we were able to take the GPX coordinate information and insert them into the feature class. But I want to point out here is in 10.1, we're actually updating this function to include the new data access module. And using the new cursor functions with that module, we're going to improve the performance of this tool. So let's see this tool in action. First off, I want to show you this website that I recently discovered that maps the TransCanada the trail. Using this website, you can download maps and GPX coordinates for different trails across Canada. Having traveled a lot through Atlantic Canada, I decided that I wanted to download those GPS coordinates and insert them into my geodatabase. So I'm just going to run this GP, GP tool that will insert the points into my feature class. You'll see here, this operation now took five seconds to complete. So I parsed the XML and inserted 28,000 points. The same operation used the existing cursors at 10.0 took approximately 40 seconds. So by taking advantage of Python's built-in libraries, I significantly reduced our development time. And by taking advantage of the Dune Data Access model in 10.1, we reduced the time it takes now to process this data. So moving along, don't you just hate weeds? <laughs> Especially a noxious weed such as leafy spurge that's represented in this map. Leafy spurge is, a, is poisonous to most animals, and its oil is deadly to fish as it enters the waterways. So my goal here is to determine whether these weed locations are randomly distributed or show a pattern of being spatially clustered. 
Now to do this, I decided to create an add-in authored with Python to analyze these points interactively by studying the spatial patterns with, by the, with the frequency of these points within a set of quadrants, known as quadrant analysis. My add-in has already been added to the map, and it's a custom toolbar that contains a combo box where I can choose a quadrant size, and it contains a tool where I can actually drag a rectangle around the set of points to be evaluated. It creates the quadrants, and it returns my result, which is the probability value calculated using a chi-square statistic. And because it's such a high probability value, it indicates to me that these points are likely to be randomly distributed. Now, let's a, take a look at the Python code behind this add-in. You'll see here I have a Python class which defines the combo box and sets up the list of quadrant sizes. Scrolling down, I see it has an unedit changed event method, which returns the value off the combo box after it's been changed. It also contains another class that corresponds to the add-in tool, which has an on rectangle event, which occurs when my mouse was released and the rectangle was drawn on the map. And it's in here where I create the quadrants and perform the analysis. So not only can you now create geoprocessing tools with Python, you can also author add-ins and do such things as interactive analysis. Finally, I just want to mention that add-ins can easily be shared and deployed using ArcGIS Online. 